What is a unit circle? A unit circle is pretty much a circle given the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So it's going to look like something. If you guys remember anything about the, the radius or um, the equation of a circle, you know that 1 is going to be your radius. So anyways, I'm gonna, just going to draw our unit circle. And it's going to look something like that. But remember, our radius is going to be out to 1. So therefore, there's a couple coordinates that we can draw off our unit circle that we already know of. So first coordinate is going to be 1 comma 0. Here we could write at 0 comma 1. Negative 1 comma 0. And then here we got 0 comma negative 1. And those are pretty much the most basic uh, and easiest values to find on your unit circle. However, what we're going to do is we're going to want to try to find the values of um, values of, or points that are on your unit circle that do not include just these four points. Because remember, when we looked at, let's take a look at our central angle of our radian. So our radian would probably be somewhere right here. right? If we wanted to look at what is the coordinate value of one radian, well, you can see that that's not something that's going to be very easy for us to obtain, right? Because remember, here's my angle of one radian. And here's what we took was like we took our radius and wrapped it around. Well, this point, it's not very as arbitrary. You know, it's not very easy to kind of look at grid marks and say, oh, that's where it is. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of use a system to help us show us how to find certain important points. Unfortunately, one radian actually isn't even one that uh, I'm going to work on solving. We'll learn how to solve that actually a little bit later um, in the year. But what we're going to work on doing is solving some very common angles that we're going to look on. More common angles, because um, if you look at kind of radian measure, rather than looking at one radian measure, if I ask you what was the, what's the coordinate point where theta equals pi over 2, well, that radian measure is from here to here. So you could say the coordinate point is 0, comma 1. But what about if I asked you, where's theta at pi over 4? Well, that's going to be halfway there, right? So let's go and take a look at this one, because this is actually going to be a very important point that's going to come up over and over. So if I wanted to find the angle at pi over 4, first of all, what I need to do is remember my radius. We're dealing with only radiuses that are going to be um, of a length 1. Now, that's the only thing I know is of length 1. And what I need to do is I need to find the x value and the y value of that triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of redraw this triangle here. And I notice that that side length is 1. And I do not know what these two values are. However, since this is pi over 4, the equivalent to pi over 4 radians is also 45 degrees. And if you kind of look at this, you know, it's going to be halfway between 0 and 90. So we know that that's 45 degrees. And what I did is when I create two bisectors, I create a 90 degree angle. What I've just created is a isosceles triangle with two 45 degree angles. So if I want to be able to find out now what those two x's are, I can use my lovely Pythagorean theorem. So what I have is x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. 2x squared equals 1. Divide by 2, and I get x squared equals 1 half. Now I take the square root of both sides, and I get x equals 1 over the square root of 2. But remember, we can't leave the square root of 2 on the bottom. So I rationalize the denominator to receive square root of 2 over 2. So that means this coordinate point has an x value of the square root of 2 divided by 2 and a y value of the square root of 2 divided by 2. Because you can see the x's are exactly the same. And if you look over here on this, tr on this circle that I have, which I'm not sure if I included. I did include most of it. You can see I have square root of 2 comma square root of 2 for the angle pi over 4. So that's where that point came from. It's not something that I just imaginary made up. That's where that point comes from. And I'm going to show you how to find the rest of these remaining points up there. So not right now we have 1 comma 0, square root of 2 comma square root of 2 over 2, and 0 comma 1. So to find our next point, uh, let's look at another one, which would be theta equals pi over 6. Now pi over 6 is equivalent to a 30 degree triangle. And now if you remember your special triangles, you would remember that there's a special kind which we called our 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that's going to become very helpful in taking a look at this. But if I wanted to find my 30 degree triangle, I'm going to draw a triangle here. All right? And what I'll notice is my 30 degrees down here 
is actually going to create me a equilateral triangle. I know it might not look the best right there, but when drawn, if you take a circle and you create and you take your two 30 degree angles, all right, what you have is if that's 30 and that's 30, that turns into be a 60 degree angle, which this is 60, that's going to be 60. So you have a equilateral triangle. Now, one thing that's important about this equilateral triangle is it's bisected by the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to be concerned about my top portion. All right, and the top portion I have is 30 degrees, or we could say pi over 6. I have my right angle, and then I have 60 degrees. Now, the only distance, again, that we know right now is 1. And this side length has now been bisected by 1 half, or uh, been bisected by 1. So now it's at 1 half. This length is our remaining length that we do not know the value of. So again, what I'm going to do to find this missing point is I need to find this x length. So again, I'll use Pythagorean theorem, say x squared plus 1 half squared equals 1 squared. Now I have x squared equal, or x squared plus 1 fourth equals 1. Subtract 1 fourth, and I get x squared equals 3 over 4. Now I'll take the square root, and what I get is x equals the square root of 3 over 2. So what that means is this x value here is the square root, square root of 3 over 2, comma, the height of this point is 1 half. Now what's so cool about this unit circle, what you guys notice is if at 30 degrees, Right, this is 30 degrees off of my horizontal. So 30 degrees off of my horizontal, I have the square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Well, at 60 degrees, that's also, really, that's 60 degrees from my horizontal, but again, that's 30 degrees from my vertical. So therefore, this point, when looking at the unit circle, is actually 1 half, comma, square root of 3 over 2. So. What you have, ladies and gentlemen, right now, what I did was I looked at our four common points. And those are the easiest for us to be able to figure out. But then what I did is I used special triangles and the Pythagorean theorem to help show us how we can find three other common points on the unit circle. Now, later, we'll learn how to find any point on the unit circle. But for right now, these three common points are going to become very, very handy for us to be able to use. So it's very important, not so much that you fully understand always how to solve how I got those um, three points, but that you understand these three points and where they're at, because uh, we are going to be using them a lot in the uh, next couple chapters. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you uh, find the unit circle or find the values on the unit circle. Thanks.